Welcome to Cha'a with Roma. On today's episode, we will talk with Sasha Dugdale, who is a British poet, playwright, and translator. She has written many books. Two of my favorites are Joy, which was published with Carcanet, and again, Deformations. And she's a translator of Russian literature. Most recently, she translated In Memory of Memory by Maria Stepanova, and it was recently shortlisted in the International Man Booker Prize. So please join us. Good morning. Welcome to Chao with Roma. And today I am with poet, playwright, and translator, Sasha Dugdale. Hello, Sasha. Hello, Roma. Thank you for inviting me. We have our, we have our cup of cha. <laughs> we finished it a while ago, um, but we had to do this again because the sound was not working properly. And thank you, Sasha, for being so welcoming, for being so warm, for allowing me to do this again with you. I'm quite relieved. It means I had a rehearsal, <laughs> a dry run. <laughs> um, Sasha, you're a poet and playwright and, trans and translator a new translate from the Russian language. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey and how you become a translator? Yeah, I, I started translation, well, I was involved with Russia over the 90s, mm. pretty much the whole decade. Mm. Um, and I was working out there and working on a playwrights project. And it was with young Russian playwrights who were writing really amazing plays. Um, and what was really interesting about those plays was they were about what was going on in Russia at the time. So they said they weren't just good pieces of art, but they said a lot about what was happening to, to people in Russia. Mm -hmm. And the, we invited across um, some British theatre practitioners, and they were going to do workshops, but they really wanted to read the plays. Mm -hmm. And I realised that I was the only one there who could translate the plays, the only one available in the right place at the right time, mm -hmm. is what I mean. And so I started working on those plays, and that was my professional translating debut in the mm -hmm. sense that it was work that was kind of institutionally important, mm -hmm. I suppose, not mm -hmm. just for myself. Poetry I've been translating for years, mm -hmm. but secretly um, really as a way just to understand the poems better, so mm -hmm. to get to grips with them through translating the language and mm -hmm. the words. It sounds like the process is, was very organic um, in a way, and I think there's something important being said about how significant translation is. So translation happens to also communicate what's happening on the side of the world that we don't really, you know, hear about or see. What do you think is the significance of translation? Well, really hard question to answer, but I'll, I'll sort of start from some sort of examples mm -hmm. and feelings. Of, I think there's a, a role for translation as a sort of form of mm -hmm. literary activism, really, because mm -hmm. you're um, working with texts that need to be communicated to the outside world or mm. um, and that might be for a variety of reasons so there was mm. some sort of political urgency to translating the courtroom speech of one of the pussy riot defendants i think mm. back in 2012 i think it was mm. um, so there's that kind of political urgency but there's also a sort of literary urgency which i feel which mm. isn't about getting stuff out there quickly mm. but about maybe doing something to English to make it bigger and contain more, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel about poetry translation. It's quite often a poem feels urgent to me because y you want desperately to allow other people to read it and have the same experience that you had when you read it in the original yeah. language. You translated memory from memory. Sorry, from memory of memory. <laughs> it's so confusing. You edit that. <laughs> <laughs> you translated in Memory of Memory by Maria Stefanova, who's also a poet and also a prose writer. And I remember uh, looking at one of her interviews and she was saying about how memory is more fluid and memory is quite elusive. And when you're speaking to me about langu language then, how it enriched a certain landscape, language is also fluid in a way and sometimes it's also elusive so when we're translating when i trans when i'm translating i find that i'm not only translating word for word but also translating the nuances translating the um, the emotion the way a line is said translating the rhythm 
did you encounter any of those challenges and how did you overcome them? Well, Maria Stepanova has a friend, or had a friend, Grigory Dashevsky, who died very young. He was a poet, critic, kind of thinker about poetry. And he said, um, well, he, he had this idea of the dark body of a poem behind the text. And he talked about that, um, I'm paraphrasing slightly, because he wrote about it in Russian in an essay. And we've talked about it a lot together. Mm -hmm. something that we think about a lot, mm -hmm. Maria and I. But the idea is that there's this sort of dark presence behind the words, and maybe they send the words out like a glow or like a kind of mm -hmm. emanation. Mm -hmm. And so when you're translating the poem, you're not just... If you just translate the, the words, then you almost don't see what lies behind them. You don't see this body that lies behind them. You just see what emanates from it. So it's really important to get back to that mm -hmm. thing that lies behind the text. And I mean, to say that more simply, it's the, the, um, the convergence, maybe, of mm -hmm. the music, the words, mm -hmm. the thought, the mm -hmm. spirit of the poem. All that's in mm -hmm. a successful poem is bound together very tightly. Mm -hmm. and. It's not really possible um, when you're translating to unpick that, like it's mm. a sort of tangle of wool. Mm. Somehow you have to convey that whole tangle in English. And that does mean lots of shifts, recalculations. Mm. There's so many metaphors for translation because it's such a kind of interesting thing to think about philosophically. Yes. And it's, it's always really lovely when people come up with new thoughts about mm -hmm. it. But essentially, I think we will just sit with a poem and grapple with it quietly and perhaps there's nothing bigger you can talk about than that, just the sitting there. Translation is important because it allows us to be aware of the world that we're not aware of necessarily and also it acts as a political, um, political activist which actually reminds me of the national hero of the Philippines, Dr. Jose Rizal. So when the Philippines was occupied by Spain for 300 years our language had turned into Spanish, so no Filipino. Well, Filipinos still s spoke Tagalog or their other dialects, but it wasn't cool to speak Tagalog, so we completely eradicated that kind of aspect of our personhood and replaced our language with Spanish. And what Dr. Jose Rizal did was he wrote a novel, well, two novels, No Limitangere and El Filibusterismo, in Spanish to get to the Filipinos who are speaking in Spanish to actually encourage them to revolutionize and to fight against the Spaniards. Mm -hmm. And I really get that sense of power of translation, but also of using other languages um, in order to get into a specific person. The second part that you said there that I really like is that translators have to grapple with those different kinds of challenges that we may face showing the shadow and not only the glow so if we were if we were to sit with a poet who's never translated before and suddenly one day you know they wake up and, and think i want to translate how would you guide them what would be your advice well i think one of the things i'd say is that you start by learning a language mm -hmm. i don't mean learn it so you can speak it you know absolutely fluently or you're bilingual but just to take the time to learn something of another language and how its grammatical structures work how its imagery works because it's really um extraordinary has a really extraordinary effect on how you think about things for a start you start to realize the contingency of language the way it depends on conditions of its the conditions of its context i suppose mm -hmm. for development and survival and those thoughts don't happen to you unless you start working in different languages. However, I know there are lots of poets who are monolingual, and I'm certainly, in saying that, saying that not judging them, it's, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's often a feature of mm -hmm. people's opportunities in life. Mm -hmm. and, I th and there are ways of doing translations through bridges or literals, mm -hmm. and I know we've discussed this before. Yes. And I, I don't, I don't want to sort of discredit those because mm -hmm. they're important in mm -hmm. other different ways. Yes. Um, they're important for, for all sorts of reasons, mm -hmm. actually, not least the sort of um, impact they can have on a poet's work, mm -hmm. working with those te other texts in that mm -hmm. way. So 
Yeah, I'm not trying to say, mm. you know, there's no space for that sort of translation. I really believe in it, and we publish lots in MPT. And in fact, some of my favourite translations have been done by um, either bridge translators yes, or translators course. working with poets mm. like Claire Pollard's translators, mm. translations of Anna T. Zabo, which oh. have just come out with ARC, um, Stephen Watts, who works with poets like Ziba Karbasi and Jolan Haji. He doesn't speak those languages, mm -hmm. but he works with the poets and tries to uncover mm -hmm. their poems. Mm -hmm. So it's a very rich vein also in poetry. I really um, agree with you when you said try to learn the language even if you don't actually fluently learn it. But when I was writing in Tagalog, I wrote a stanza which is supposed to be included in an English poem. I tried translating it on Google <laughs> to see if Google Translate will translate it properly in English and I'm like, no, this is not what I meant. It's completely, it's, it's, it's completely different. But actually, that's what I want anyway. I want that Tagalog to stand on its own yeah. and not be translated. So we need human translators as well and translators who know a little bit of the language. Yeah, and isn't that good that in a sort of increasingly automated world that you absolutely need poetry translation to be done by humans? The real, there are real places for, for yeah. just this sort of very careful, painstaking work. If you think about it, there's a lot of things now that AI could do, you know, but still language is so sacred that it needs a soul to translate it. For me, there's a sort of transformation and healing and magic in, in, in that work that's happening, which reminds me of, my, in my husband's culture, because he's half Japanese, they believe in this thing called kototama, which is basically the magic that lives in words. So koto means um, speech mm -hmm. and tama means soul or life. I really believe it because in nursing, we don't say, when we speak to the patient, especially an unconscious patient, we don't say, are you okay? We, act, we just say, open your eyes. So mm -hmm. we shake them and say, open your eyes. So that translation of, it's not really translation, but that utterance of words, and there's magic in, in that. But also what I'm sensing is there's also magic in translation. Mm. That soul, the glow and the shadow, transfer. <laughs> I love that idea about magic in words and it reminds me a little bit of something that a Russian translator called Grigory Khrushchev was telling me about which is he was um, and I don't know if this was him but we were just having a talk about rhyming or soundscapes generally but particularly rhyming has been very important in Russian verse for you know many centuries mm. and he was saying how that there's a magic in rhyme um, because when you say one word and you have to rhyme it then the meaning is, is somehow slightly produced or altered by the sound of the rhyme. So as, yeah. you, as you rhyme, you conjure up the meaning as well. And I, I just, I, I loved that idea and spent a long time thinking about it because it's something, it speaks to, to mm. something about poetry which is not pre-prepared or logically mm. assembled, but that follows the journey of the spirit through. Yeah, follows the journey of the spirit and follows the rhyme which is you know, very similar in cantations. In the T Tagalog culture, they're all rhyming, you know, all yeah. songs and incantations. So there is an idiom, loss in translation. If there is something that we gain in translation, what kind of works have you discovered through translation? Uh, I only, well, I tend to mainly read translation, mm -hmm. partly because mm, I love reading about different cultures and points of view and contexts um, they always enlighten they're somehow enlightening because they they speak to a sort of overall human experience but in in different ways and mm. in different shapes and forms and I I just love that I think mm. that's it's been it's been fundamental to my mm. reading life mm. I suppose as well as my writing life and I um, I can't help thinking that we just need more and more translation and mm. because in a way the world is sort of turning away from that communication, that joy in communication, mm. internationalism and it, we, we seem to be retreating from it and it's terribly sad to witness. Ironic it is that 
we actually have access to the world on our you know in our hands through our phones but at the same time that sense of connectedness is not really there isn't it and translating poems or any other work of um, literature would help that there are so many things that we don't know about each other and through that understanding perhaps we could grow as well as a person, you know, we could foster. Poets always talk about empathy. At the same time, how many more, imagine how many more voices are we not hearing mm. because we don't understand them. Yeah, absolutely. And also ways of using language. Mm. You know, it's so exciting when you discover, for example, the Korean um, poet Yi Sang, translated by Jack Jung and a group of translators in America. His poetry has been fundamentally important oh. to me. Well, Poetry is different for me now, I've read Yisai. It's, it's his collected works. Mm. He died very young. He oh. died of tuberculosis in the 1930s, mm. I think. And so he's quite a small body of work, but mm. it's really extraordinary. And mm. I would never have read it if it hadn't been for the work of those translators. Mm. And I feel indebted to them because it's made me think about writing and poetry mm. and all sorts of things in a very different way. We would never have seen that part of their life eh? yeah. had it not been for translation. Well, thank you so much, uh, Sasha. It's been such a joy to, thank just, you, just to talk to you. Um, I hope that I could read more of your work. I'm always excited um, about your new work. I really enjoyed the affirmation as well. But thank you for sharing your knowledge and for inspiring us today. Thank you very much. I've really enjoyed it. It's been really lovely. Thank you. Thank you. What Sasha Dugdale has taught me is that translation does not only allow us to communicate language, but actually to communicate the heart and the soul of the work to help us grow as well as a person. I think everybody should try to translate and of course read translation because it would open doors for us and help us to enrich not only our personhood, but also our way of relating to other people. Thank you for being with me at Cha'a with Roma, and I hope to see you again on our next episode where we talk about things that inform, interest, and inspire us. Thank you.